Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and it's hot as balls in Ireland. So we're going to be playing some more Age of Wonders 4 today. And we have just one more purple dragon boy for us to take down. Now, that kind of implies that we've taken down multiple purple, purple dragon boys. I am currently number one in military and expansion. However, I'm last in magic. That does not faze me, however. We have a relatively large army moving southwest to take him on. I do have a couple of armies heading off in a variety of other directions, namely to try and just kind of clean up some of the stuff to my north. It would be kind of cool if I could settle another vast city or two I do have the Imperium for it just to kind of fill out the map slightly I need to get rid of this outpost for example this guy was under siege but looks like he has recovered um, it would just be nice if I could just clean up like there's a, there's a bandit camp up here to the north um, there's just a few little things that I'd like to get rid of there's also I'm pretty sure there is a um, a pile of BS down here to the south as well that I need to deal with so I'm gonna plonk down a healthy old telepuerto right there toe and that should resupply this army with enough troops to keep it on the move uh, the hunter spider and the bird joining up forces we will of course build palisade walls here to keep this well defended and i think we actually managed to capture some archon blood here for 20 extra mana which should help pay for the uh, mana cost of the teleporto i've got a pair of young dragons and i think i'd like to get them to meet up with my main dragon so i'm going to move them generally this way um, and i think i'd like to recruit another young red dragon i'd ideally i'd like to have a, just a stack of red dragons like that's kind of a fun idea to me is to just bring a whole bunch of them oh we can get another mine in the capital that'll be an extra 20 gold per turn which potentially pays for a dragon so yeah there's a lot of a lot of a lot of fun we can have here with the whole dragon stuff oh hey it's uh what's his name it's some mascara the grove tender oh cool so i can't actually fight these guys over here um, as it currently stands i can take a bit of time to improve all these province improvements get them all fixed up and get the city back under control because now i feel like i can defend this city i finally have an army in the nearby area um, i've got no threats coming from the northeast i could probably delete this outpost now um it's just costing me golden mana i have another outpost to the east i don't really need to be able to teleport up here um, one thing that i find Slightly annoying is I can't use my vassals teleporters. Like, I really feel like I should be able to. If I can use my allies, I should be able to use my vassals. Might be a little bit of a hot take, but that's just how I feel. I think I'd like to clear this bandit's way and get control of it on the way down to the south. So we'll keep pushing in that direction. Let's build a outpost on the Astral Dew magic material. And then we'll annex the bandit's way on the way. Huge battle, or at least a huge army flying around out here. Here's the, the death dragon himself, with a couple of bone dragons in tow, actually, um, floating around with him, which is kind of a scary point of view to have. I think it would be really cool to implement some kind of mechanic for the, um, for the undead books that was, like, focused on resurrecting things that you've killed. So, like, if you bring down a dragon, maybe you could revive it. If you bring down like an enemy hero maybe you could revive him as some kind of like on dead creature or something right you could do all this sort of stuff maybe you can make abominations i don't know this i think i feel like there's so many areas of the game that have so much potential for um interesting gameplay do i go ahead and try to clear this contender's runes no you're, you're on your way to somewhere else you were going to the teleporter so i could bring you into the north so we could come up here clear this outpost and potentially even settle a city up here to the north to claim all these resources and all this land let's take my main hero into the bandit's way revealed traps will be active we'll auto combat it. it should be an easy clear we'll take the w we'll take the wand too uh, i gain a lightning sword i let my soldiers yeah i'll let them loot I'll let my soldiers loot for a bit of extra morale. Make sure we pass through this. Like so. We are going to need another teleporter some, somewhere close to the front line eventually. Um, let's make sure... Oh, for some reason you won't let me annex the bandit's way. So that's going to be another 5 Imperium and 20 research per turn. Which are honestly good resources to, to, to kind of add to our um, situation. I could found a vassal city here if I wanted to. Honestly, I kind of want to... I wish there was like, you know, stuff that didn't um how do i explain it i wish there was the city limit thing is kind of annoying is basically what i'm saying that's the point i'm trying to get across oh right i need to build a golem mine here i suppose a good place to build it is just anywhere really yeah i'll just plonk it down on top of the forester that's fine should probably build my wizard tower at some point this game uh may as well 
we got the Halls of War here in Magniford. Uh, we definitely need a fourth. Well, we got a lot of repairs going on. I'll take another quarry. I'll just let the city chooch along. I may as well grab the Keltrop. Well, I'll grab the Masonic Hall. That's boosted at least. So Halheim built a bathhouse. There's not much we can do for the morale of the city. I think we'll build the Halls of War to improve it. I would also like the Mint. That's more gold. Um, the Blacksmith would be nice, but it's not like completely necessary for me to get. I would think I would much rather get the Mint and the Halls of War. That's an extra 30 gold per turn baseline. I think it would be good to get our third quarry. Skadoosh. So Edmund the Talented. I have quite a few remains collected here. Let's go ahead and sell them off to pick up even more gear um, to fill up our Dragon Horde. Sal the Dexterous has a few items. I thought I, I feel like I sold these guys before. I feel like I'm selling people I already sold. I don't know if I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just having deja vu. Deja vu. I've just been in this place before. We're up to a healthy 120. Three. I feel like an Orb of Seeing alongside Dragon Sight would be quite good here. Um, I might switch the Wand of Lightning Strike for a Wand of Magic Missile because it always hits. This always hits too, actually, and I think it's just technically better. I don't know if I need the Belt of the Berserker, though. I guess what this does do is it gives me Steadfast, which means my hero can't be one shot, which does give me a turn to either get some healing or protect him. So there's something to be said for that. We've got a large monster den over here. Um, it would be good to get both this mana node and the Archon Blood into a vassal city. So I think what I might do here is actually build an outpost with a view of founding a vassal city here. I'll also have to get this crawler's nest inside my borders. Probably best to have it for the Imperium income. All righty, it's time for us to go for a tier four books. I do think that Tome of Nature's Wrath is quite good for me here. Awaken Instincts is a fantastic sort of end the battle spell. Uh, plus 15 hit points, regain all action points. It does cause Berserk, but I think if you play it correctly, this can be amazing. Devolve as a spell is a pretty good stun spell. I don't know how much I would use it. Destructive Regrowth can be quite useful to damage certain things. Awaken the Forest is a great summon spell, and the Horned God is a pretty damn good unit too. Um, Nature's Avenger is a fantastic support skill for your heroes, particularly support heroes, right? All friendly animal and plants within two hexes become five strengthened, right? That's 50% more damage. You add things like Flanker into the mix, it starts to become pretty insane. Um, so the Tome of Nature's Wrath, there's something to it uh, 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 in terms of what we could make work. The Tome of Paradise on the other time, this feels way more economic. Like we could do Enchanted Bloom, uh, we could do Nature's Bounty, Fortress of Vines, Blessings of Paradise. I feel like Nature's Wrath is the direction we need to go here. So I'm going to take Nature's Wrath and of the three spells we're going to be given access to, I think that a Destructive Regrowth is a decent one. Horned God is amazing late game. Now they did heavily nerf Living Vines, which is probably was was necessary. It was a super powerful spell. I think Devolve here might be a good spell for me to take. No, I'm going to take Destructive Regrowth. I'll lock in Devolve though. Is it time for me to transform my race into dragons? I think so. It's time for Draconian Transformation. This will open up quite a few interesting decisions with regards to how I want to play. I think Draconian Transformation plus Warbreeds could be like crazy. Although I think do Warbreeds already have regen? I don't know. Um, but the like playing any sort of defensive build with the ability to regenerate 10% of your hit points per turn is honestly fantastic. I really love how nature is geared towards regen. That's kind of like a fun thing for me. I like that. I think I'd like to do some kind of Paladin build, like a feudal... Like a feudal order dragon paladin build. I think that would be a lot of fun. Where you go for um, high defense, lots of vassals, lots of healing and regeneration. Okay, so we got Redemption of Winter here. We can prune the population. Get Gekokta the Cleaver, which is a hero. The Evolving Guardians. I don't know if I want that. That's a level 6 hero. I can reap the seeds. Oh, we could gain a whole bunch of population. I think I'm going to go for the whole bunch of population. We'll lose a bunch of Imperium, but all of my cities grow twice. Um, that's kind of insane, actually. Now, we definitely want to get this Archon's blood inside the city. And it would be good to get a conduit. So I'll grab that conduit. And then the city of Relic, we also need to get our third quarry. So we'll get that third quarry. I'll send these guys to the teleporter to go become uh, part of the future. I just need one more animal over here and then I've got a great animal support stack just filled with 
real high power. We've got a matriarch. We've got a, another matriarch, a warg. We've got a piglet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the city of Magnaford has also grown twice because all of my cities grew twice. Um, we have a, we, the repairs are complete in here. We would like to get to four farms. Um, so I'll grab that farm right there. We would also like to get to four foresters and four quarries. So I'll take another quarry or a forester rather. I'll send these down to the teleporter. You know what Magnaford needs? Magnaford needs a teleporter. Which I know it's not very far, um, but I think it's actually necessary. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to tell the city, yo, just build me a teleporter like right there. It's necessary. I need to get that teleporter up. I would love to get the merchant skill in here too. There's at least a few mines in the area. Um, that'd be good. So we got a big bunch of wandering marauder armies that we're going to have to deal with. I'll build those palisade walls. We're going to clear this large monster den. Uh, I'm going to let them go. Do a good aligned thing. Because my alignment is pretty low. Uh, this guy I'll auto combat. I shouldn't lose anything. Yeah, perfect. No losses. Just experience. A bit of gold. We clear that. We gain a tier 3 item, a bunch of resources, a tier 3 item, uh, a tier 2 item, and a tier 1 item. So that will actually significantly increase our dragon horde. Now this, I wanted to turn this into a city. So I'm going to build a conduit there on the Archon's Blood. Uh, I managed to get a phoenix? Holy shit. Um, I'd love to clear this. I'm hoping we can get it. Uh, we lost a carrion bird. That's totally acceptable because the phoenix can take up the position of the carrion bird in that army. Uh, and then we can move this way like so and send this wolf through the, the teleporter to go join you. Um, I'm likely gonna want... I need two more fire dragons, I think. So I'll get those two under recruitment, but I do want a wild speaker first. Something I would like is if you could claim all of the tiles around an outpost. Like if you could build this up into being a proper like secondary city. Um... Like a minor city be kind of cool. I don't know. I think there's there's definitely like mechanics you could do to make outposts a little bit less blobby. I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people really like the way the game is presented. I think the game's presentation is fine. I do kind of wish that, um, like when I zoomed out to here, that the borders between my own provinces, they were like a little bit thinner. Um, because I just feel like this, the presentation on this screen is a little bit messy. That's kind of my opinion. I know this just looks a little messy, so I think it needs it needs it needs a little bit of iteration. Um, so we've got two more dragons heading to the front line. I have a gar gargantuan army. I mean, my unit upkeep is over five hundred per turn. I don't even know. I wish there was a way for me to be like, hey, how do I check how much of an army I have? Because my army is massive. So I think I would really like to build a teleporter outpost over here. I also think it would be good for me to maybe build another city down here near this cursed keep. Um, there's a lot of good resources that we could take advantage of. So if I'm going to plunk a city down, a whole bunch of resources here. I'll probably put an outpost here to claim the cursed keep for my main empire and then put a city like here. I'm kind of surprised that these tiles haven't transformed into non-desolate terrain, to be honest with you, because that's kind of what I was expecting to happen at some point. It's like all the desolate terrain would have been transformed. But maybe it's like there's some sort of limiting factor that I haven't discovered. So I have a ton of Archon blood and Astral Dew. So I might actually see if any of my allies want to buy that. Because that's that's something someone told me about. That like you can actually just sell stuff. So like what if you want to buy Astral Dew? Um, I can get 250 gold from you. Yeah, you can, just, you can just sell your resources for like 250 gold injection. I think that could be worth it to do early game. Because access to the actual material itself doesn't do much for you. Like researching spells is cheaper. Or combat casting points. I mean those are fine really early game. But how much are you really going to make use of them? You know, that's kind of hard. It's hard to know. I really hope that they... I like the idea of there being like many different types of heroes. I hope they come with even more archetypes for heroes. I think it would be a really cool if there was like a dragon-based society that can only have dragon heroes. Or um, like what if there was a special type of hero for feudal societies. Um, I think that, that those are like angles of the gameplay that are totally worth exploring in my opinion. Now, I think we can basically auto-combat this. No, I'm gonna have to fight this myself and it's gonna be an interesting battle because we're up against three swamp trolls. So let's go ahead and get started. So there's a few key creatures that we need to defeat, mostly the swamp trolls. The Kaurags aren't so scary. Uh, let's have a look at the positioning. We've got a bunch of really damaged units over here. 
Um, and my heroes over here on the right. Now my hero is a pretty damn good DPS unit. So there is something to be said of focusing my main army here on the left side, or on the right side rather, for the start of the battle. And then on this left side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push two slithers up here on the left to try and bait them to chase. You have two to keep them in tow. Um, the rest of these guys, I'm going to try to group them up for a really big blossom of life to restore their health. This guy... What's the range on this? I want to be able to get the Phoenix with the um, with the animal buff. So I'm going to do Unleash the Beast on the Phoenix. I'm going to move this slither over here. These two slithers, I'm going to move them around the back because I really don't want to trigger my uh, opponent to come at me if you get me. So let's see, how good of a Blossom of Life can I get here? I could hit most of my creatures um, that are hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that. Now that cost me 30 casting points, but it's going to restore a lot of health to my army, which means I'm going to have a lot more to play with. Now I need to pull them back slightly so that my enemies don't prioritize this side of the battle. I'm going to push a Phoenix up here to the right side. And the range on this virulent outbreak is six tiles. So if I click this, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to step my hero forward three or four tiles to about there is fine by me, I think. Now we have to watch out for the Swamp Troll's Poison Plague Spores. This is a lot of damage and it also inflicts diseased, um, which is not ideal. So we're going to have to deal with that. We also have to deal with the Firebomb, which is a big AoE attack. So between Plague Spores and the Firebomb, we're going to have to deal with a lot of AoE this game. So we need to make sure that we're not in range of the Swamp Troll to get really good hits on those abilities. Now they are only one hex AoEs, so they're a little bit easier to avoid, but let's see how this plays out. How do my enemies move here? Um, okay, so a lot of enemies are pushing to the left, as I would hope. So I'm able to distract them with the like a minority of my forces are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, we got a ton of regen triggered. My hero's going to drop the virulent outbreak. And if I drop it right here, I can hit an awful lot of the enemy army. Boom. Now, a lot of resistance happened there, but a fierce number of them just got hit. So their resistance is now negative in some respects, particularly towards fire. Let's drop a Call of the Wild. This will give us boasted re defenses on all of our units, making us much tankier against physical damage. My Phoenix can potentially do a very good AoE here. Oh, it's based around the Phoenix itself. So let me undo that. So I would like my hero to tank potentially here. And I want to avoid this fire here on the left. Now these two guys... I want to just be sitting right outside my enemy's engagement range so as to encourage them to continue to chase on this left side. The rest of my units I'm going to push to the right. I'll drop a conjured animal here. I honestly, I think we could just sit in place. I think we're in a good spot to counterattack. So I never want to be able to hit more than three units at a time with an AoE. So I'm trying to be careful about how I position. I'm okay when I'm hitting three, but any more than three feels like I'm giving him too much efficiency. Any less than three, it feels like I'm spacing my units too much. Now he does have a four hit here, so I'm going to back you up to this tile. So the other maximum things that he can hit is a three, and I think this will be a very attractive bird for him to attack. That's my hope. Let's see what they do. So he comes up this right side, and he hits these guys, but he's in a very vulnerable position for my phoenix to go after him. Oh, he dropped his poison cloud early, actually. He threw a rock. Now, he did a yell. Uh, we might have to bring down that Karig. How badly do we need to bring down the Karig? Oh, that's a big charge strike. 84 damage on the flank. That's hard to say no to. We got to take that. Boom. So if I were to just start firing poison bolts at this guy, I would need to do 200 damage. If I were to trigger Marcus Prey on him, he would take like 36% more damage. I think we could make that work. So while I would really like to do Blossom of Life, I need to get rid of this Karig. Um, he's a tier five, so we'll get behind him. We'll peck his eyes twice. We're going to sprint with my hero a single tile and then shoot him three times for 51 health and damage. I'll move this guy over here. He'll take the retaliation for me, which I'm fine with because then I can set up for a much better melee strike with this slither. And now I just need to get enough ranged attacks on him to finish him. I just need eight damage, which should be a single slither strike. 70% chance to hit. Perfect. So let's start slither striking this guy as well. Uh, we're likely to get hit by a pretty bad firebomb here, but I think I'm okay with that considering the damage we've done on, a sing on the first turn of actual engagement. Taking out a Karig. So stay out of range of this guy. And then let's play aggressively to throw... Um, attacks. All right, there's a second kill. 
Because now what we want to do is we want to get up into the fight and potentially even bait this other Karig over here to the right side. Let's see what we can do on that front. Maybe we can split these guys even up as well as we clear up this right side. The more confusion and disunity we spread in the enemy forces, like that's a pretty bad hit, but it's not the end of the world. I'm going to have to drop a heal there, I think. Yeah, okay, so now we've got the enemy forces like super split up. Um, you may as well poison this guy and you may as well poison this guy. Let's drop a Blossom of Life right there. It's a lot of damage. You may as well run forward and get a bite in. Then you're going to detonate your Phoenix Bomb. Do big AoE damage. Um, can you fire a web in a nice spot? Yeah, that's a good spot for a web. Get a little bit of damage onto this guy. Can we get my hero to bring down? Oh, undo that move. Bring down that Ogre. 48 damage. There we go. You get that kill. Um, I think it's okay to run through the fire now. Because we just need to tackle this guy to keep him from moving. Um, so now if he moves, he'll take like a disgusting amount of damage. And then we get behind this guy too to get a big crit on his back. You're a little bit hurt, but you can fire a bolt. Um, there is a Dread Spider Matriarch. Go to there. Can you shoot him? Perfect. A little bit of poison. So we don't want to let these guys get too much in melee on us. So let's fire some poison bolts at these kids. Slow them down and just generally hurt them a bit. I think we've more or less cleaned up this right side. I'm hoping that the regen trigger is strong. Yeah, big regen trigger. That's good. Ow. Poor little guy. He's going to be in damage. What's he doing? He's doing a big smash. Now he's going to escape. Well, that's okay. So my units have ways to escape death. Nice teleport. Now he's going to absorb attacks. That's okay. He's, he's kind of a sacrificial lamb regardless. So I, th I think we're more or less set up to win this now. I'm just going to do a call of the wild. for The defense and the strengthened. Let's get the kill on this giant. Get you behind this guy to flank him. Get you over here to flank him. Uh, you could finish him or you could do major damage there. Can you finish him? You can't finish him because he has blight resistance. Go ahead and finish him. So we're looking good. Morale is high. Go ahead and finish this guy. Now he should teleport to a position where he's in a bad spawn. And so a little poison dart should soften his cough. You just be a slippery boy. Don't let him flank you. Defense mode's handy for that. Let's poison spit this guy. We can't get a flank on him. We can do major damage though. And just like man fight him to death. Now we do have to worry about this battle mage here. He could do serious damage. But I think more or less we've brought our foes down low. There's very little of their power left on the battlefield. All right, this poor little slither is probably going to die. Um, but I'm okay with that actually. He's done his job. He was distracting. Let's get behind this guy. Bite him in the butt. That should get him. I'm going to use my hunter spider to leap to here to get him in control, hopefully immobilizing him. No immobilize trigger, that's fine. Um, we need to get this hunter spider, or this vampire spider rather. So I'll charge him in the back to flank him. Let's do another call of the wild. You could do 45 damage here. Let's make sure we get that in. Big hits, big hits, and you, you can finish him with a melee strike. All right, let's push hard left. And this little guy is going to Zoidberg away. And I think we're in a good position now. We just have to pick apart these guys one by one still. All right, he did a big AOE triggered misfortune they're chasing down this little guy that's okay this gives us an even better opportunity to break down our enemies um i think our regen has just run out get up to here bite him twice he's immobilized so that's like actually huge um get through give him the bite critical hit excellent phoenix fly over this slither is a little bit vulnerable so i need to keep him in a safe position because he's already triggered his teleport away in safety now this guy he's already on fire but i don't want him to go on fire again so I'm going to loop him around the flames. I'm going to move my hero to here to try and take on that dire penguin. Now the dire penguin will get a charge on him, but he should be able to step back a tile and then kill the penguin. You need to get that swamp troll down. All right, big AOE hurts. The net hurts. There's the peck I was expecting. All right, let's take that opportunity attack. We'll walk two tiles, shoot. It's a good charge strike to finish that penguin. So the phoenix is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting here in the late game. Um, I want you to encourage this animal to be stronger. God, why is he so resistant to damage? It doesn't matter. Get those three attacks in, those three pecks. Get that three damage in. We'll get him. Don't you worry. Shit, we're losing forces quickly. This is probably one of my scrappiest fights to date. Can you jump behind this guy? Get that flanking bite. Come on, we gotta bring him down. There we go, there we go. We brought him down. So I'm gonna do the sprint with you and just peg it to this side of the battlefield to try and make this work. Get up there on top of the battle mage. Because the more zones of controls that he's in, the less freedom he has to do stuff that annoys me. He did a big flame attack, that's not good. Ouch, ouch. So this phoenix has fiery re rebirth that works once per battle. I need to get this ogre off him. So let's 
Kill this and let the Phoenix tank. This battle mage needs to go. I'll fire a web for some good damage. Hero needs to get out of here because I need to keep the hero alive. It's an important part of the battle plan. Now, the unfortunate thing is he's actually bleeding and on fire. So maybe the best thing to do with him is to just crap out some damage because he's going to die because he has no way to heal himself. This slither, I'm going to send him off. What's he got affecting him? Oh, he's poisoned. So he's going to die at the end of this round anyway. This slither, I'm going to send off to hide. My phoenix will get reborn. Fuck, I think I lose this battle, actually. Although it's a lot closer than it should have been. Uh, let's do our phoenix AoE. Run away with you. So they kill the phoenix. The phoenix dies. And it'll be reborn in a couple turns. Hunter spider. Maybe we can make something happen with the phoenix. Unlikely, sadly. Yeah, I think that's a wrap, lads. Okay, so I guess we lost this battle. I was not expecting to lose this battle. I guess it was just a little bit too much high tier stuff. I feel like I fought it pretty well. I don't know how... I guess I could have maybe spaced my units better, but three Swamp Trolls is very hard to deal with. Uh, but when you consider, like, what I had versus what they had, the amount of, like, low tier Slithers, a single level six hero, I feel like we came out on that fight, like, pretty okay. I'll have to teleport uh, a new stack down there. Let's immediately go to my Crypt. And we will inspect him. Uh, oh, shoot. I don't have the building that allows me to resurrect people, do I? No, I need to build the crypt. So I'll move that there. I'll insta-buy it. I'll go to my heroes. Uh, I'll inspect his remains. It still won't let me. Ah, there's the resurrect button. Sorry. Uh, resurrect for 400 mana. So he's back already. Um, and I'm going to give him this very strong stack of beasts to go finish off the job he had down here in the south. This is a very nice stack that he has. So he's straight back on the horse, straight back fighting. Uh, probably a good time to actually look at his equipment because I never really did that. Now, you're built to be a ranged hero, I think. If I check your skills, yeah, mostly archery, eagle eye, all that stuff. So a better bow would be in order. No need for a crown. I guess I'll give you a crown. Chest plate above vitality is just one of the better items. So I'll give him that. Uh, Juggernaut Greaves, another great item. Probably better I give him the Cusses. Juggernaut Greaves is more for a melee. Let's see. None of these rings are particularly good. The Wanda Magic Missile is a nice be able to move and do a thing. Astral Heart is great for melee attackers. I'll take a Wand of Magic Missile. That's like pretty decent. And a Locket of Channeling is quite good. This is going to cost me a little bit of money for my Dragon Horde. But my Dragon Horde is now at the level. Like I haven't actually been equipping my heroes because I've been trying to keep the Dragon Horde going. Um, but now I'm at the point now where I can actually equip my heroes and make them a little bit scarier. So I'm going to go ahead and build a road right here to this tile. I'm going to found a city on this spot. I'll build another outpost here to grab that cursed keep inside of it. And then I'll probably build a teleporter somewhere nearby as well. This will. This is something I want to be a city too, this outpost. Looks like this guy got the hint and is heading out of this outpost area. Um, I'm going to try to chase him down. Do I have a unit that's fast enough to catch him? I do. This should be an auto-resolve win. Really? Okay. I thought my Furies would dominate here. I'm curious to see why this gave him the auto win. So I think the obvious thing here is to... Oh, it's because I have one of my weakest stacks in the fight. Right, I'm going to move my Warg to the right. I move my Furies, sorry, my Warg to the left, my Furies to the right. With a goal of trying to split the enemy army in half. I'm going to try and advance really hard on the right side. Again, to try and trigger these guys to come fight me. Mano y mano. Um, Call of the Wild doesn't do much here. Animating the Flora does. Especially if I animate Flora back here, maybe I can bait them into poor positioning against the summon. So he just did mental mark on us. And he's pushing left. So he completely ignored my floral stinger. So I guess they must have told the AI to ignore um, combat summons. Let me see. No, that would get you into a zone of control. We don't want that. So go to there. Push as far as you can this way. So I'm hopefully hoping this warg will pull these guys to the left while we deal with this stuff on the right. Um, let's get forward here. Can't do a butcher's cut on this guy. Is now the time to get into melee? I guess it is. No, it's not. I regret my choice. It's fine. We'll make it work. So he's got a, what, 6% chance of death? Maybe we can help that out a little. All right, let's see how they play this. Right, he star purges. Star purge. Nah, he's moving units to the right. I don't like that. That's not what my plan was. We do have him splitting his forces. This is great. We managed to pull them back on the left. So we, we've got them heavily split. We just need to win this fight right here in the central area. You got star purged, which is not ideal. So you need to go and step just outside this guy's zone of control to keep him chasing you. Good job. You, on the other hand, you need to pull back even further um, to keep them chasing you. I need my spearman to tackle this battle mage. I'm going to mark him as a prey so that he's getting the flanking damage on him. Big damage. I'm going to move you up. 
Do a frozen breath. I can't do this without hurting my own troops. Let's bolster his defense and then bolster his defense. Get a little bit of extra damage on him. You're gonna die if you stay there, so I'm just gonna pull you back to heal. I'll heal you next turn. Um, so the range on this is pretty far. Let's get all of my archers into a compatible set of positions. We'll drop this on them to give them that strengthened and regen. We'll start combo firing this guy. Not gonna be a huge amount of damage initially. Should be enough. All right, let's see what he does. Oh, he mind controlled my magic summoned unit. Yeesh. Okay, dispel four effect, give him strengthened. That's perfect. You need to be brought down. We just do not do enough damage. Flank is important. I think I need to mark him as prey. Also, I need to bring down this guy, so I'm gonna take those shots. You got 90% chance to hit. See if we can soften him. Step two tiles to the right. One, two. Step two tiles to the right. One, two. Hmm, I thought I had a stronger army than this. I wasn't expecting his troops to be so powerful. Strange though, because they're not even that, they don't even have that many buffs. It's just like these spell shields, these are like a tier two, oh, I guess they are a tier two unit. Boom, boom, boom. And then I want you to run forward and see if you can butcher him. 39% chance of kill, no good. Um, you come up here, boom, boom. We just, we can't do enough damage, I guess. I need some kills, that's the big problem. We're getting snowballed. Our morale is pretty low. Um, what can we do? Youthful rejuvenation wouldn't be bad. A blossom of life is okay. Problem is he's still got a star purge in the bank, I think. Yeah, lose all positive status effects. We need to, just can't really do any sort of buffing with that. Best thing to do is to mark his prey. How long does mind control last is a question. Uh, one more turn and I get my warg back, so that'll be helpful. Can we chase this guy down, I hope? All right, mark this guy's prey. Uh, one, two, three, four. You're not quite in range, actually. But if you turn around, you can kill him. Bang, bang. And then if you chase down this guy, boom, boom. I might be able to animate another Flora to make my life a little easier. Why don't you fall back a tile and give him bolstered defense? Okay, that was a painful blast. He star purged my archers, but now I can do a uh, healing thingy. So let's drop the healing blossom right there. That's a great opportunity of a heal. It's going to play you far back so you can get a little bit of regen in. You don't do much damage anyway. Um, one, two, three. Focus fire. Are we flanking him even? Nope. But well, we can get good damage. Doom, doom, doom. And doom, doom. Bang, bang. I need you to tackle the... Oh, that's a nice flank right there. One, two, a little bit of damage. And then one, two, three. We're whittling them down one by one. So, I mean, we will make it happen. A lot of really complicated battles today. So we lost a spearman. That's okay. Oh, come on, Warg. I need you to un be mind control now. Oh, I guess that just is maybe a debuff that never goes away. So who am I going to mark as prey here? How long until he can star purge again? Two turns. So I can I can keep marking other stuff as prey. So I'm going to mark you as prey. That'll get you one shot killed by this guy. Which makes it very efficient. If you hit this, you kill him. You missed. Okay, that's devastating. Uh, let's get that triple strike. One, two, three. There's the cavalry slayer triggering as well. You really don't want to be in range of that warg. So retreat in defense mode. I have to get kills, because especially if these guys heal. Um, I have to bring down my own warg now. Right, so a good heal should trigger. Oh, what was that? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Marking me is okay. Oh, my warg just woke up! Dude, what a timing. At least he tanked a hit from that unit for me. Okay, I need to take out this big damage unit. Boom, 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 boom. So he no longer has ranged damage, which is amazing. Get a regen on these guys. No point in you attacking because you're tanking. Fall back. Um, if I can animate some Flora to tank for me, I think we got this battle. Because I have healing and he doesn't. And my attacks are ranged. Animate Flora. Run forward. If you hit him, he won't counterattack. You weren't meant to his poison spray. Uh, retreat. Just don't die. Fall back to here. Shoot him. No, nope, that's not where I need you to be. You go to here. Shoot him. Go to here. Shoot him. Oh, God. I think we lose. Fuck, dude. I mean, to be fair, I had a whole bunch of excess units. And these are like my super low tier units. Like, and when I say low tier, I don't mean like they're low tier. I mean like they're just bad. Um, let's get that 18 damage in. And then there's 12 damage. You can get this kill. That's good. Um, face them and then defense mode. You're going to take a huge amount of damage, but at least you'll go down swinging, so to speak. Ooh. Gross. Can't even get a mark prey off. 24, 18, 30 damage is the max I can do. Let's do 16 damage on this guy. If you step, you die. So you may as well just tank. Let's see what they do. I mean, their morale is very low. 
Oh, God, he crit me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Archer, please. Get the kill. Come on. Yeah! All right, I'll take that. This way, it's a very Pyrrhic victory for him. That's two Pyrrhic victories. Or two, or two very power... Like, I guess these units just weren't very good. They did not feel as good as my Slithers, to be real with you. Um, on the plus side, my economy is doing great now. 400 gold per turn, 300 mana per turn. That's fantastic. Okay, let's annex that Cursed Keep. Oh, wait, no, that's not what we wanted to do. Oops. It's fine, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just make this a, um, we'll just make this a city. It'll be... Okay. Um, I don't plan to clear out any of this bullshit. Um, too much, too much effort, not enough time. Let's go ahead and do a Ritual of Alacrity to restore these armies. We definitely want to get a teleporter over here. So I'm thinking right here is good. Get a teleporter on the backside and then we can start pushing like properly on the purple dragon. We're doing a lot of like distracted random ass crap right now. I don't know why it takes six turns to found a city here. What? What the heck? I guess maybe it's because of the desolate, terrible terrain, um, which I'm fine with. So we'll found a city of the evolving guardians down here because this is decent terrain. Uh, we're mostly going to be turning it over to be a vassal once it's founded. We do have a couple of mines down here. I'm going to get started on the Merchants Guild. Um, this outpost is going to get blown up. We've also got Deliqua, the Fleet Footed. I'm going to start teaching her some of these support abilities, like Pack Leader is a great one, giving all animal units the flanker ability so they get twice the bonus, bonus from flanking. Uh, we have a reached Bonded Vassalage with Gem Keep, which is slowly increasing the amount of resources we get from them, which is very nice. That's going to be just some nice passive income, like having dividends, you know? We built an outpost down here, which is going to be a great base of operations for a teleporter. And we have some absolutely gargantuan stacks of units to fight with down here. Um, it's going to be a series of extremely epic battles. Epic referring to the scale, not necessarily how cool they are. Now, I think I'm going to take my dragon leader here. And I'm going to put him in charge of my dragon stack. I'll bring through my dragons as well. And I'm just w w missing one more young fire dragon to add to this insane uh, fighter stack of dragons. I still feel like the Templar fertility is just way too expensive for what it gives. Like the fact that it gives 18 draft, 18 food right now. Um... And it costs, what, seven turns of production? Let's say 750 production, 220 gold. Compare that to an armory, 30 draft, 95 gold. I it just, it seems kind of expensive for what it gives. The fact that it can't be boosted either, it definitely needs to be adjusted. So my question is, do I just mass produce fire dragons now? I reckon I do. That's like the ultimate late game army composition is just fire dragons galore. So every city I own will be producing um, fire dragons. Let's go ahead and attack. We cleared this outpost. I'm going to capture that outpost. Maybe I'll turn it into another city over here. There's like some stuff we could capture. I think I'm going to throw every single military unit that I have at this fight with the people of the purple dragon land. Oh sweet Jesus, this guy has just built up troops for I don't know how long. All right, yeah, we're going to need to we're going to need to cut through um a lot of troops. Yeah, let's go ahead and take Awaken the Forest. This is going to be a great way for me to turn my world casting points into actual military power. I will continue to lock in Devolve, though I may as well. I think at this point, um, it should be obvious like how I'm developing my cities with regards to just gold being the main thing that I want to generate. And then kind of on the way there, production. So I don't know if you need me to give you updates all the time now. We have finished casting Draconian Transformation, which will turn my people into dragons, giving them Draconic Rage. I might spam some Berserkers with this. I think that could work quite well. The Natural Regeneration would give them a lot of uh, staying power. The Immunity to Burning could be quite good. This is a major racial transformation, so my people will be uh, very Draconian now. And I am curious to have a look at how the Berserkers shape up. Yeah, I think if I'm going to go Berserker stacks, what I will need is to research a Chaos Tome. And the Tome that I need from Chaos will probably be the Tome of Revelry, because I'll want some Scalds. Um, the Blood Fury weapons will be nice. Yeah, I want to go basically have morale. Good morale will be good for Berserkers. And I tend to find Scalds are actually really good combinations with Berserkers. Uh, they have Heat of the Revel, which can inflict insanity. They have the Song of Carnage, which gives fortune 
and strengthened. And then the Song of Revelry, which gives rally, hastened and regen. So the combination of these things can really get your morale to be exceptionally high. Um, and then maybe if I can build up a support hero for the barb for them um, to get them that critical hit chance. I don't know. These are all directions I can go. Right now, I'm just all in on dragon stuff. Because in my opinion, I think I should probably get some fire wyverns. Um, yeah, you know what? That's actually a good idea. I might like mix in fire dragons and fire wyverns because I think the fire damage is going to work really well against this guy here uh, because he's actually weak to fire. Now, when I say he's weak to fire, he has the lowest resistance out of all other things compared to fire. And while these fire dragons will eventually be really, really good, um, they do actually have to get to champion level to evolve. So it'll be a while before these guys can really do much. Um, but I think I'll probably go for the Book of Pyromancy to get fire damage on my units. And then I'll go for the Book of Mayhem, maybe. I'll, but I'm definitely going for the Book of Pyromancy to make this final battle easier. I, I really like how when you have a pretty good understanding of the game and the game's mechanics, that there are ways you can make like long-term decisions that will gear you to be stronger against certain people. Now, here's the thing. His capital city is all the way over here. So while technically this is the last guy I need to kill, it will be the most difficult of all of the combats, especially because I'm going to be getting very little support from my actual allies. Like, I mean, he's even losing the city of Saul. So I need to claim this crawler's nest. I'm going to put my hero on top and then I'll bring this army. I will go ahead and then immediately explore it. Um, I'll go for the materium check. If I fail, I fail. Okay, we succeeded. Excellent. This will give us a damage on the spiders. We'll auto combat it. We'll clear it pretty easily. Uh, we'll get a bloody edge, which is a nice tier three attack weapon. I could get a recruitment pool or I could steal her money and imprison her. I'm going to imprison her because I don't mind being evil. Now, the plan here was to annex that into my empire to get that five uh, points per turn. Now, you're going to become a foundable city. No, actually, you are not going to become a foundable city. I was going to found a city somewhere else. No, I messed up by annexing this to the wrong city. That's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's okay. We'll, we'll let that, we'll let that slide. So I think now is the time to begin marching. At the very least, to begin the battles on the edge of their territory. I'm going to want to do a little bit of rearranging of all of these army stacks as well. Like putting the higher tier units with my heroes. Like would I rather have a Slither or a Phoenix in this army? I think I'd rather have a Phoenix in here. So I'll switch the Phoenix. Um, I, I, I would love a mechanic in the game is if I... If two army stacks have like... Uh, movement left. I'd love to be able to right click on an enemy, like an allied stack rather, and be able to trade units between them. That would be um really, 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 really nice. It'd be something I would just love. Love, 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 love. Um, I think I would like to gain a Whispering Stone, so I'm going to take that. Uh, getting an extra 10 gold also kind of suits me quite well from my vassals. And I'll give this extra Whispering Stone to the Altar of Destruction that I vassalized over here. Starting to pull in quite a bit of resources here from my vassals, so I'm quite happy with that situation. Now, obviously, they're not super happy with me because of my alignment problems and they disagree with me, etc, etc, etc. I will recruit a Fire Giant. I think those are worth recruiting. I don't know if these other things are worth recruiting. My experience with their performance was really bad, so I am just going to recruit the Fire Giant. Especially, I think a fire giant in this scenario could be really helpful. It'd be great if I could get like two fire giants, actually. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no uh, spell jammer inside fold, which means I can be pretty aggressive with my armies here. Um, I think these baby wyverns are not necessary to be in this army either, so I'll probably swap them out for slightly better creatures. The altar destruction wants to go to war with me. Um, I'm happy to pay the Imperium to keep them happy. I think that's fine. I feel like these Hunter Spiders could upgrade to be very powerful units if I keep them in this snack, especially because I think this guy is particularly good at, like, guiding other units. All right, let's pop down the... Well, probably won't be the final teleporter, but this is definitely going to be one of my last teleporters uh, right on the front line. Now, I'm going to do the old uh, test here. I can summon a wild animal inside this territory, which means there is no spell jammer, which means I can go in here and feel relatively safe. Um, I think I will get a destruct destructive regrowth, get one of those loaded into the chamber so we can blast these fools, and then we're going to bait them in. Um, this is going to be an incredibly difficult sequence of battles. Just want you all to appreciate that. We are going to be fighting four to five battles here, potentially what is just about to happen. Like the second I hit enter, there's part of me that thinks I should wait until I have pyromancy. Um, but I'm just going to go now because I think it'll make the content more interesting. Yeah, theoretically I should wait, but like boring. I think Ralic needs to build a teleporter um, 
inside its territory because it is struggling to reunite units where they need to go. This city also needs a teleporter. So let's prioritize that over farms. So I'm just curious when the turn is going to roll over to Kralikavar. And because, I mean, look, look at the sheer amount of military that he's got. He's the number one military guy in the entire world. But here's the thing. I think he doesn't have the staying power that he needs. Um, yes, he's going to come with like the Giga army here and he's going to attack me. But is all of this crap that he has, is that actually enough? I don't think it is. So these two armies in the center here, these are the two most powerful ones, because no matter which army I attack, um, these two highlight. So I need to pick which armies would it be the easiest for me to fight. And I think it might be this one right here just has crappy skeletons and a couple of bone golems. So I think that might be the perfect one. Now I'm going to be pulling in this army stack and this army stack. I would much prefer to have another hero stack. So I'm going to pull this hero stack forward two tiles. And now I'm going to pull in my three hero stacks um, against this set. So we're up against one, two, three, four, five, six necromancers, five bone golems, and five skeletons with a couple of white witches and evokers. Now, I almost guarantee you I auto win this on the auto resolve, but I will take severe losses, potentially even losing dragons. What? I didn't lose anything? What? Is my dragon that powerful? I need to watch this replay because I was expecting to have to manually resolve all of these battles. But if my dragons are just this powerful, I want to know what's going on. So he advances with his skeletons. He's advancing as normal, as he would expect. All right, he drops a rally. My dragon comes forward, throws the breath, ble bleeding, gilded, the whole nine yards. A little bit of unleash the beast. Natural regen, all looking good. Do a little dart, 19 damage. Because he should be pretty, he should actually be pretty strong against my setup. Because I do an awful lot of blight damage and undead are really good against blight damage. So he did a soul overflow, giving these guys a ton of health. He's getting haste going, strengthened. Yeah, excellent. I don't know if Necromancers is the right unit to buff with hastened and strengthened. You kind of want that on your melee shock units that need to get in there and start dealing damage. Oh my god, that counter attack was disgusting. Uh, this is the great thing about Slithers. They're actually really good at tanking focus fire um, because they teleport out after they hit zero hit points. My dragon should not counter attack actually because they don't have resist thingies. Virulent Outbreak, Phoenix comes forward. Big damage. Phoenix is going to do work for me because it does fire damage, actually. It's going to be really useful. So my hero just does a heal. Nice web hit. What do we got going on here? So you come forward, you drop a little heal on him. That's helpful. Not amazingly good, but helpful. Jesus. Did you see the damage on that? Good God. All right, my dragon comes forward. Holy shit. 37 damage on the first hit. And then... Yeah, these dragons are actually disgusting against, like, mid to low tier units. Also, the critting for 60 damage on these guys when they flank is just nutty. Just so nutty. I really do think Flanker is one of the best um, traits in the game. His human units are retreating. They've just, they're panicked. So only the undead are holding the line now. Uh, yeah, I think I underestimated how good those dragons were. Um, they're super good. They just crap out damage with their tail swipes, with their claws. Oh, dude, the critical damage that my units are pumping out. I'm going to tell you right now, dude, Artisan Implements is so good. The ability to do a 30% chance to crit is just insane. Um, yeah, we're just we're just getting kills left, right and center. This is just complete evisceration. We don't, there's no, there's not even really tactics or strategy here. We're just running at them, damaging them. Bang. Enemies down. Yeah, this is just a slaughter. This is just a straight slaughter. 130 gold collected. We could do that again. Let's have a look. Who are the strongest stacks? If I attack this guy, these three activate. If I attack this guy, these three activate. If I attack this guy, these three activate. If I attack this guy, others activate. So who is stronger between this guy and this guy? This guy and this guy. Honestly, there's very little in the difference. So we may as well just go straight in. I'm pretty sure I could just auto resolve this. This is going to be another evisceration here. It might be slightly harder. Um, yeah, like I lost a slither. Oh, oh, no. That was absolutely disgusting. So let's group them all up as we advance. Keep them all together. Now, the, the real question is, do we stop and kill all the cities? Or is this a crusade? Do we go straight for the heart? And I think this is a crusade. We're going to go straight for the heart. We're going to march through the Valley of Death, never stopping. Um, 
we are going to go straight for the heart of the dragon. So this dragon stack definitely needs a hero to manage it, um, to make it cheaper to maintain. I've got five out of four cities, so I definitely need to uh, drop Sculpid here. I'm going to go ahead and release it as a vassal. That'll be a handy little dandy vassal. I'm going to come up to my hero screen. I'm going to recruit another hero. Ideally, I want to support hero for my dragons. Like trainer is fucking perfect. Uh, let me take this. Literally the perfect hero. Uh, I'm going to recruit him. Now, I don't like his skills. So we're going to immediately reset his skills. So what we care about is inspiring leader to make units cheaper. Shepherd to make units with Evolve cheaper and fa and stronger. Then we want Experience Leader to give experience to the dragons. Um, defensive Training to keep the dragons alive. Well, actually, we just need them to do damage. Endurance Training to make the dragons stronger. Precision Training to make them do more damage. And then Revitalize to keep them healthy. So that is the skill set we need. Now, let me have a look. Is there anything else I can pick up here? I guess Defensive Training, that's good. I could theoretically build this guy as a support unit. Support abilities grant regeneration. So yeah, I think I'll build them as a support unit fully, um, which means we're going to take restore. We're going to take defensive training. Perfect. So between the restore ability and the revitalize ability, he should be able to provide an awful lot of support. Now I'm wondering if I can pick up more here. None of these are particularly good in my opinion. Um, I will take summon animal to lower the number of roles on the next nature option because i'm hoping for mass rejuvenation which is perfect it's a support ability um which means this guy is now the perfect heal and then i'm also going to take spur to action um this guy is the perfect dragon supporter which is honestly we're going to rename him um i guess we can make this hiccup horrendous the dragon trainer mission accomplished we have the perfect leader for a stack of dragons uh, they now only cost 22 gold per turn um because they're gonna get a huge discount and they will also level up incredibly quickly and they're going to gain passive experience per turn literally couldn't have asked for a better hero role let's add a few fire wyverns to the pack so i'm going to get a war shaman and like a couple fire wyverns to just ease these out because what these are tech these are actually animals they're also apparently dragons they're dragon animals so they will benefit from the empowered beasts as well as the low maintenance so they're a little bit cheaper to maintain and they also do fire damage so they should be pretty effective against our enemies the undead brilliant we got awake in the forest this is probably something i want to cast i think we need to go for a chaos tome here is our next home we have to go for the tome of pyromancy because we're looking for searing blades to give our melee units a ton of extra damage um, the Ritual Pyre will also give us a ton of extra mana. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We're also looking for Fiery Arrows. That's going to be nice against the Undead in particular. So I think going for the Tome of Pyromancy, I mean, specifically we're looking for the melee abilities. So I'm going to shuffle research here a little bit. I'll take Fiery Arrows. It's a one turn research. That's basically like an end turn shuffle. Cute little trick, by the way. If you build like a hut or something like this on bad terrain, you can then go ahead and put a special province improvement on it. So for example, I can put a Ritual Pyre on a tile that I normally wouldn't be able to put a Forester on. Quite a handy little trick that you can do my ruler is leveled up they are now level 17 i want to grab the inspiring leader ability that'll save me quite a bit of money on the stack that he's now leading and i'm going to start casting awake in the forest we march deep into the belly of the beast now something we definitely need to be careful of some of the cities we're going to be crusading through um we might not be able to cast spells due to spell blockers so i'm going to, have to be scanning with my offensive spells as we march Come on, man. Where is the Searing Blades? This is what I've been looking for. Um, this is going to help us. It's going to give us plus four fire damage, uh, which should be very, very effective damage against the undead. So let's head over to here. We'll build another outpost. This is so we can reinforce more directly on the front lines next turn. Um, we can get a fairly easy kill on this one guy. So I'll just quickly auto resolve that. Shouldn't take too much damage in retaliation. And we will get ourselves prepared on the crusada searing blades has been researched could be good to get some pyromancers i will yeah i'll take some pyromancers we are now going to cast fiery arrows this is actually going to make my slithers quite a bit better even though i don't have a whole lot of them left um that extra little bit of fire damage on their ranged attacks eh, you know it could help out the extra damage against burning is useful too so here we go he's actually decided to step forward and take a fight with me now this time i don't have my most powerful units he has got a stack of bastions he's also got some dark knights these are going to be tough things to fight right now um, and i think he has cast whiteborn no actually these are not undead units although i am i crazy can we get a zoom in on this mole's face does he look like he's giving me the people's eyebrow 
Can I get the picture of the rock's face and this mole side by side? This mole is giving me the people's eyebrow. I don't care what anyone says. Can you smell what the mole is cooking? Right, let's go ahead. Now, if I auto combat this, I think I will win, but it'll be by the skin of my teeth. And um, the fire giant will do an awful lot of work. Wow, actually completely dominated them. I'm curious to see how that played out. Is it just a fact that at this point I'm just too powerful? Are my potions too strong for this traveler? Okay, we got a nice regen. And you stepped up and did a nice little bit of a regen for him. Fire Giant came forward, didn't do anything. Pack Hunter, right, the whole lot's happening. Let's zoom out. Can I, can I have control of the battle camera? How do I? Okay, I think I managed to change it to where I'm in control of the camera now. So we got a big heal, bolster defense. I think that was the um, Call of the Wild that does two, two bolster defense plus one strengthened. So now this is where we start getting opening hits. 33 damage, dude. Oh, 18 damage. We're looking at it. Summon a fire pillar. Oh, very cool. Oh, man. Virulent outbreak hitting three. Although they should be resistant to poison and decaying and stuff like that. Oh, almost already killing that archer. Warg running forward, getting a nibble on this guy, putting him into a zone of control as well, which means he has to step out of that zone of control, potentially taking a opportunity attack. Here we go. Okay. Soul overflow. This is a really inefficient soul overflow. My Phoenix tanking the Dark Knights for me. That's actually quite good for me because if the phoenix get killed gets killed it will come back and a lot of this stuff that could die i think i'm okay with the majority of whatever's in here dying plus these slithers oh my god look at that he crit me for 12 that's pathetic that is pathetic damage to crit for 12. um i reckon this fire giant's gonna have a strong next turn although he's kind of far away from the front line so maybe not this warg is probably is probably the reason i lost a unit oh man poor phoenix getting just obliterated yeah, this warg got just singled out. I mean, he just, he ran too far forward. He, you know, he got antsy in his pantsy and he left that battle mage. Now he got a frozen off. Okay, right. It's the downside. Um, I, I feel like my enemy's army is too heavily melee based. This is, uh, this is why I love skirmishers because they can close the distance and fire off what you call them. Oh man, that is a beautiful Phoenix bomb right there. That was just disgusting amounts of damage. We're even summoning small animals now. Here comes the slither. Oh! Oh, 40 damage. Thank you. Ba boom. 12. Okay, that sucked actually. That was a fumble. Come on, give me a big fat one. Oh, he, I suppose he is the poisoned and burning. Oh, that's right. My ranged attacks inflict burning now. My slithers are actually sick. I feel like the Tome of Pyromancy works really well with the slithers. Yeah. I feel like if I had gone for the Tome of Pyromancy earlier in the game, maybe my build would have been a bit stronger. Like, slithers plus Tome of Pyromancy because it gives them the ability to inflict burning on the ranged attack and then they do 20% more damage with their melee attacks against burning. They do burning and poison with their ranged attack, meaning that the enemy is taking 16 magic damage per turn, um, passively, potentially. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's just like objectively true that I should have done that. But yeah, I feel like this battle is, I don't feel like this battle is going exceptionally well for me. I mean, certainly there are certain areas of the battle that are going well for me, but I don't know how we managed to get a clean sweep here. There must be some turning point or some kind of moment here that causes a significant change. Like, I thought the Phoenix Bomb was a big moment, but nothing really came of it. Oh my god, the snapback was gross. Because, like, oh, I guess it's our turn now. All right, we did a bolster defense, strengthened. Oh, 31 damage critical hit. Oh, 22 damage crit. 22 damage crit. Very nice. Quillbore coming up, inflicting the bleed, resisted the burning. Oh my god. The snap noise of these slithers is amazing. I really want to have crocodile units. That would be fun. Want to implement crocodile? We need like a, uh, maybe like a water, a water plus nature book or something. Like a water-based animal book. I don't know. Bring out the amphibians, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Nice, 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 nice. A little bit of a snap. Oh, the hunter spider leap. Blap. Snap, snap. Kablam. Chomp. Chomp. And blap. Yeah, I think now the enemy is fleeing. So I think we actually broke them. Yeah, look, you can see all the units fled. I th you know, that's a pretty acceptable outcome. The Phoenix survived with only one HP because, of course, it quote unquote died. Uh, but that's not going to be the last time he attacks me, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, his dragon hero is right here. It's not the time to kill him, though. We're not ready for that. Right, outpost complete. Let's drop a teleporter right here. Now I can bring forward my new stacks um, straight into the heart of the enemy's heartlands. Now, is this lost tower? Should I clear it? Let's use raw magical power. 
to make the defenders weaker. These guys have resurgence. So it really doesn't matter if they, oh, only if they're tier two. Uh, maybe if these were leveled up dragons, we could take this fight. I don't know if we can take it right now. Um, they are veterans though, so they're getting there. All right, I'm going to get you to build a road straight past that outpost. So this should allow some of the units in the back to start getting a little closer. Every day I'm getting closer. I'll keep a stack of units here in the back. This is my rear guard, keeping each other safe. I need three more fire dragons. So there's one young fire dragon, two young fire dragons, and there's the third right there. Boom. There's our pyromancer. Let's select a new research. Try to think what would combo really well with my current army. Nature's Wrath really doesn't do much for me. Well, I guess that 20% crit chance and four blight damage and base attacks is quite good. Force of Nature. Um, Mass Rejuvenation is also sick as hell. So maybe that is the way we do go. Do we go for the Tome of Paradise now? I guess I can't unlock any other tier four book. So it's now or never. Uh, let's see here. So that is a buff spell. Ooh. Now that is powerful, exhilarating pollen. I don't need Gaius Chosen. But I'm definitely going to go for Exhilarating Pollen, for sure. It's a really good battlefield-wide spell. Now, this next city we're going up against, this does have a, um, a, a blocking tower, a what you call it. A thing that stops you casting spells. So I'm going to go Sovereign some Wyvern Fledglings and see if we can't find an angle to get in here and maybe find the Spelljammer. We did manage to capture uh, Moira the Blessed. So I will be killing her to take all of her really cool equipment. Again, for my Dragon Horde. So we will be executing her. Boom. A hard tour will be probably the most difficult uh, barrier we have. Let's summon a fledgling right there. And our hope is to get through and find that spell jammer. Shit, we didn't find the spell jammer. Okay, this is a very risky moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the city under siege. Um... Drop a dragon attack, drop a harass the defender. So the combined 26 damage of this, plus also setting them on fire, um, 20 damage here. That's a 50 damage bomb on anyone defending the city. Then I'll add bolt repeaters to give me even more damage. And this will be a really good lynch point to break my enemy's armies. Um, but I need to be really careful for a very, very simple reason. Um, I will not have magic in any of the battles my enemy initiates in the next few turns around this city. So I need to be incredibly careful and I basically need to do a run by with some of my units to try and find the enemy channeling tower. 20 knowledge for each province in your domain is actually a pretty good deal. I'm going to take that. Um, that should finish like a bunch of tech for me. Um... Like Horned gods are pretty good so I may as well finish that. What heroes do I have available? Anyone who would help level up some draca dragons all right little baby wyvern, and get over here there's the spell ja wait where's the spell jammer in this city Am i don't i don't see a spell jammer i actually just don't see it it's not there i don't there is no spell jammer oh i was clicking on the wrong spell yeah he he can't jam my spells here okay that's fine yeah that's cool i'm good with that all right let's begin the battle of ahad tour um, i'm kind of curious actually um with my double strike here how are these gonna, guys going to hold up when they get completely bombarded and harassed right at the start of this battle? So let's see how they handle it. Jamie Straza, Emeraldborn. Oh! Oh my god! Dragon obliteration. I'm dragging these nuts all over my enemy. Okay, so he strengthened himself up. Um, and some of them are burning and just taking damage. Dude. Dude. So I don't think we need Blossom of Life. Uh, Exhilarating Pollen is a fantastic spell, one that we will immediately cast. So all friendly units gain 15 morale and all enemy units have a 90% chance of becoming distracted, which makes them uh, take the uh, flanking debuff. Like all attacks against them become flanking. I'm just going to step my dragon forward and drop the big damage on them. I'm curious, can my own units get hit by the dragon fire? Yes. Do they get gilded? Bleeding and gilded. Okay, that hurts. Oh man, another stack of dragons over here. So I could summon an animal or I could revitalize. Get up there and do some damage. Particularly we want to get into melee range with a shock unit to prevent them from um, doing the naughty things. Do a nice little revitalize here. I don't even know if I need to use strategy in this battle, dude. Like it's over already. Like we're just going to straight up kill things with our like bolt towers. Like, this damage right here is insane. How do they stop me? I don't think they can. 
make this guy teleport. Um, we could just like leap on him with hunter spiders and get into melee and take out units like on turn one. Blap. So much of their shit is dying on turn one, dude. And like the great thing is I can hunter spider leap. Yeah, sure, I'll take some burning damage, but like who the heck cares when I'm just completely obliterating the entire enemy army. 50-50 shot and a kill. Um, heal that guy. It's actually over for them. Like there is nothing they can do. All right, let's drop a mass rejuvenation on this stack of dragons. You do your damage here, bam. You take a little counter attack, it's not a big deal. Step up and do your damage. Um, all three of these dragons should get up. I think I might do a little whip, a little tail whip. Uh, yeah, let's do a little, uh, a little tail whip. Whoop patch. And uh, how about like a little, a little tail whip? Whoopcha. And then wouldn't you know it, we could run up and do a little claw. We'd give him a little mauling. You know, you do a little, you do a little maul. Whoopcha. Whoopcha. Fusro whoopcha. Hunter spider. Get up behind. Snap him with your little claws. Give him the old snip snap claw attack. You know, seeing these giant crab undead crab monsters really makes me want to have actual crabs. Like, in the game. No, not what you're thinking. Jesus. Oh, the snapping noise as I just completely destroyed that dude's necks. Can you revitalize him? Thank you. Um, Run forward. Slippery slip. Fire your little snip snip. Boop. Those units are supposed to be strong against blight. I just want to point that out. Call of the wild. Pew. That's it. That's a wrap. We claim victory. Literally a one turn battle. Okay, maybe it was a two turn battle. Oh, auto combat that. I think we just vassalized that conquered city and we continue the crusade. Just because the city was in the way doesn't mean we stop. We're going straight for the heart, straight for the jugular, the jugulare. There is no breaks on this crusade train. Like if we stop, we lose. We have to go straight for the soul vault city. That's actually, it's kind of like actually, I'm getting kind of frisian thinking about the idea of like, there's no time to stop. We have to go straight to the enemy capital. Cause it's like, if I succeed, I win. But if I fail, it's ogre. Um, and that's a really fun, like, you know, Ooh, 120 mana cost, but that will be significantly reduced by the upkeep reductions of my army. But these searing blades will make us even better at fighting. Right, let's hit this spell jammer, which is going to be the first stop on the way to the enemy capital, at least inside the capital territory. Let's do a spell jammer scan. Um, it looks like we have taken out the only spell jammer here, so I could potentially blow this tile up. Boom, turn it into a forest, then immediately cast Awaken the Forest. Boom, destroy the forest and create a very annoying army for him to deal with. Now, his hero isn't home in the soul vault. So I think I'm going to have to split up my crusading army to go look for his hero. But we definitely need to bring this down. I feel like it's way too easy to build teleporters around my enemies, um, like lands. Now our mana per turn just tanked. Uh, I'm not actually sure why. I assume it's because I just created this incredibly mana expensive army. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can lose some of it. Yeah, there we go. No longer have a mana problem, um, but it was fun to do it. So this here should be enough with a single hero. This hero, in fact, to take the capital. Um, I'll give them this wolf stack as well. The rest of these guys, I'm going to send back to hunt down the actual Lord himself. All right, let's begin the Siege of Soul Vault. Now that will take 12 turns. So if I add bolt repeaters and um, let's see, the dragon attack doesn't really speed it up, but I think in conjunction with the harass defenders, it basically makes it unlosable. Um, so I may as well add probably the headlong assault to bring that down to seven turns until we take his throne city and then just position a whole bunch of units around. So we've got his capital under siege in six turns until we break it. We just need to find the hero himself. Right, let's take the um, Alma Rocktail. He's an aggressive tactician. He'll give hasten to all of my units. Um, now he's going to be expensive to maintain. However, he does have the chance to get mass rejuvenation. So I like him. How do I want to build him? I think it would be fun to build him as a melee fighter with some support abilities. Bloody Edge could be a good one. Um, what else do we have? We have the Staff of Decay. I think we'll go with the Bloody Edge. No, the problem is if I give him the Bloody Edge, I can't make him flying with a flying mount, which allows him to keep up pace with the dragons. So what if I gave him the Green Lance instead and then gave him... Let's see, what do we have? A Thunderbird as a mount? Yeah, that's perfect. Now in terms of his skills, I'm going to reset his skills. First thing, we'll take his Mass Rejuvenation. Then we'll take Demon Step because it's a nice bit of damage. Um, the absolute necessary skills are Inspiring Leader, Vigor, Experienced Leader, Revitalize, and Precision Training. Let's see if we can make sure all these... We need Endurance Training, Precision Training, Strength Training, and Defensive Training. So all of those are what I would consider to be like basically necessary. 
Then I'll take defense one and fighting one to make him a little bit stronger in the melee. Um, chest plate of vitality is necessary, I think, just to give him that little bit of health and defense. And then he's looking pretty good, right? He's up to 10 armor. Jesus. And him guarding this stack of dragons will make them quite a bit cheaper as well. So like if we take a look at these dragons, right, 2610 is the cost to maintain. If I step the hero out of the stack, they now cost 3012. So it saves quite a bit of upkeep to have that ability on your heroes. Honestly, it honestly feels too good to where maybe the developers need to consider changing how the hero upkeep reduction works. For a single skill point at level one, a 20% reduction in the army upkeep is like really damn good. I mean, across five dragons, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, the hero almost pays for himself to be added to a dragon stack. So there he is. There is public enemy number one, Kralikavar, the collector. He's begging me for peace. I think I obliterated some of his army um, and I'm going to just straight up refuse that. Weirdly enough, some of my allies have like declared peace with him. Like, why would you, dude? Like, this is our win condition, bro. Let us do some revel without a cause. Hopefully we pass. I mean, I don't care, to be honest with you. Um, we lose a bit of city stability. Oh, well. Uh, we do have our wyvern stack now, though. A thousand combat power and a bunch of dudes who are ready to do some damage with uh, some searing blades. It's kind of a fun setup here. Um, they're also supported by a wild speaker. Now, the wild speaker is mostly here for the 20% upkeep cost reduction. Like, if we take a look at the stack, right, 12.5 is the cost. We step the wild speaker out. Uh, now it's seven or 16.7. It's like wild speakers are really, really efficient, considering they cost 12.2 um, in the amount of like money they save you. Uh, and also the fact that they are just like pretty all right units, right? They have unleashed the beast. I wish this was like slightly less cooldown. Um, and I wish they had a heal. That's the thing that I, I wish they, they had. Um, but I mean, they're pretty good units. Plus, they get the uh, natural regen. They're dragons. All right, let's begin. Do I have a hero nearby? There you go. Uh, begin the siege of Nils Hadoom. We will add some siege projects. We'll be adding a dragon attack. We'll be adding the harassed defenders. That's just so we do major damage on the opening of the battle. Uh, we will do, be, be doing bolt repeaters. And um, I really think they should consider making the dragon attack and the harassed defenders exclusive you shouldn't be able to do both in my opinion um a bit like how only one siege project will deploy um like one siege craft unit only one bombardment type should be available in my opinion uh so that that's just my take but yeah let's break the battlements and uh, it'll be three turns until the breach get as many units around the city as we can and see if that is all she wrote let's go for the tome of the goddess of nature if we can get forest of nature before the game ends um that'd be pretty nice actually the city is completely surrounded there is no escape we have you come out with your hands up right that's the kind of situation we're in i wonder if there's any last minute empire developments i think right of the dreadnought here getting my units extra defense will make a difference i don't think raising cities matters here don't think research, knowledge when a unit gains a rank. Um, ooh, casting points would be useful. Um, cities that share a border with the throne city, extra stability, special province improvements. Yeah, I don't see much in the way of extra resources here. So I think we're good to go. Somehow Acreon has held against one of these dragon dudes for so long. Plus he should be technically, no, I guess she's, I guess Zetevika is down here. Day 120 dawns, the moment of reckoning. For Kralikavar, the Collector, has come. Now, he has the Aspect of Shadow, allowing him to drain morale, applying cell, Soulbound. Shadow Transformation does Frost Damage. He inflicts Weakened, Frozen, Heals a little bit per unit hit. He's a Siege Breaker. Uh, now, he should also have another ability called uh, the Collector. Attacks that transform targets into zombies until the end of Battle and Kill. The Collector's Gift. Summon three random tier one undead units. Cool down three. Summoning. So he can summon units over and over again. Think about that. So let's grab our main hero. Step into the battle lines and begin. He has two heroes that will have access to summoning random tier one undead units. We will have a ton of units capable of battling here. 
Now, I'm curious about the auto resolve, but this one I'm going to fight myself. This is the final battle of the campaign, of the game. This is my final enemy I need to kill. Oh, look at that dragon strike and the serious damage, like really softening them up, taking away that defender's advantage. He's going to do a little bit of work. He's going to come forward. How do I how do I stop the camera following this? OK, I turned off the combat action camera and I think that made it better. Right. We figured it out at long last. Um, let's step forward with my main hero. My main hero will be doing a fire breath attack right there or there. This hits more stuff, so we'll drop it over here. Boom. Big hits, bleeding, gilded, the whole nine yards. Let's charge forward with our dragons. Dragons are moving up into the fray. Left side here, we've got a bone dragon with a bunch of melee, a little bit of range. Now, my main hero, what are you capable of doing? You've mass rejuvenation, you've virulent outbreak, you've summoned animal. You also have Wand of Lightning. I think the thing to do is to break the battlements over here so this unit can more easily be attacked via my ranged unit so he's vulnerable and then he can't get easy shots on us. Then I'll start plicking down the dragon. I'll move my bird up, move you to there, put my archer in this spot, doing two damage to him. God, only 14 damage. It's kind of sad, actually. Two attacks, not two damage. Um, I'm going to play Exhilarating Pollen. Probably should have played that first. So we got huge morale buffs and now enemies. Oh, this is this guy. So we need to get him. Let's get these two hunter spider matriarchs into position. Step you forward. Try to get him poisoned. He might be immune. Doesn't matter. Big damage regardless. Um, we could kill these two units, but I think getting this nice and tasty damage here works for me. Boom, boom, boom. Loving it. Uh, we're going to be up against it over here. Blast. Fire your bolt. Oh, do we kill him? Turn one killed enemy hero. That's actually disgusting. He no longer gets spells. That's horrendous for him. That's really bad for him. I actually feel kind of bad for him. His counterattacks are kind of pathetic. I mean, they're doing a little bit of damage to my units, but it's really not enough. What are these guys doing? Some sort of like dark surge? Cringe. More like dark cringe. What was that ability? Deals damage to enemies within two hex cone. Double damage to negative. What? what where do you get this dark surge ability? Is that a Dark Knight thing? That's pretty bad. Uh, right. Let's focus on this left side because I think the biggest damage will focus fire this guy. 14 damage on crits. You should be able to step forward and easily nibble down him. Go ahead and plink away at that dragon. How do we feel about getting up in the dragon's face? I think that's something we can do pretty comfortably now. Um, charge attack, 40 damage. Plus bite attack for huge damage. Slippery to get in here and do a double bite. Boom, boom. Um, the dragons should do work here. Basically, anywhere you go, you'll get kills, which is great. Go kill this mage. Go kill this guy. Kill this guy. Boom, boom. He's a little bit of lifesteal. I don't think it should be enough to completely save him. 70% chance to break him. Perfect. I forgot to do my animal make angry men thing. Like, that's Fade Beast just teleported. Jerk. Uh, kill this. Boom. Boom, boom. I mean, even with the nerf to spiders, they're still pretty good. Gasha the Viper. Uh, yeah, why don't you rush forward here? Give a little bit of health to that matriarch. Take away those negative debuffs. I think that's us done. I think I think we managed to kill Kralik Kavara the Collector. Really? A... Uh... Kinda... What's the word? Anticlimactic? Is that is that the word? We were building up to this, like, f final showdown. And it was just... It was kind of not that scary or epic. Dragon bite. Kill. Dragon bite. Get me a kill. Not quite. Okay, get me a kill. Can you almost get me a kill? Very good. Can you get me this kill? Perfect. And then can you get me the kill that spawns? Okay, no spawn. Uh, go over here. Nibble on him. What about if you shoot a web? Oh, that's a, bad, that is a big web. Uh, shoot a big web. Come on, Spider-Man. Shoot your web, Spider-Man. I think that should basically be uh, a wrap no cap on the enemy stack. Oh, yeah. Bam. What do we got left? Some BS over here. It should be easy nibbles. Nibble, nibble. Nom, 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 nom. Nibble, nibble. Toil and dribble. Nibble, nibble. Nom, nom. Nibble him. Nibble his soul. Charge him and send him to a hole. That was a depressingly easy battle. Uh, I'm just going to auto-resolve the next one. Ka-clunk. Oh? Oh? 
fire dragons? <gasps> fire dragon stack. Dun 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 dun. We got fire breath now. Draconic Rage, True Sight. They cost 78 gold each to maintain. Oh my god. Fire Aura, Juggernaut, Siege Breaker, Terrifying Aura, True Sight, Fierce, Unit Cannot Route, Draconic Rage, Demolisher, Charge Resistance. Damn, Daniel. It is a large unit. Amphibious. My, my, my. That is a lot of defense. It's a lot of defense. It's a lot of defense. It's a lot of attack. These dragons are insane. I got, f I just got four, five fire dragons. And now they can level up. And they'll get 12 health per level. That's really fun. Really cool. Really, really cool mechanic. Well, I guess it's two turns until we clear out the capital. My game crashed almost certainly due to overheating because it's summer, which will probably be the reason I don't play much Age of Wonders 4 until the next patch. And a quick little auto combat to finish uh, off our friends. Skabushka, Skadushka, victory has been found. A glorious victory for the wild guardian Jamustraza Emeraldborn. A turn 122 victory. Uh, I'm very happy with that. That was a very fun game. I quite enjoyed the Dragon DLC. Uh, I could, you see, the thing is, there's an awful lot of content I could do for the Dragon DLC. I could make news, I could do patch reviews, I could do all that kind of stuff. But really, I'm a guy who likes to play games, you know? I like to play them. And so, uh, yeah. Very cool DLC, very cool game. Maybe we'll do one more game. Don't know about that. Might just wait till the next patch. I'm a little bit Asia wondered out of it, to be honest with you. Um, I will ascend Gemmustraza Emeraldborn to my p -p 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 Pantheon. A little bit sad the Pantheon didn't get any updates with this. Like, you could have had an extra dragon branch here. Come on, seriously? No dragon branch? For real? Uh, disappointing, is what I would say. That there's no uh, extension for the dragons. But I mean, aside from that, great DLC. Uh, cool. Added a whole bunch of things. Rebalanced the game. Just sweet. Hope you guys enjoyed. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!